love dearies! Welcome to this very special edition of the Sleepy Hollow Book Club! So we're gonna have a nice live chat today and we're going to be talking about The Secret Garden and we have a very special guest that I can't wait for you all to meet in just a few minutes. And in case you guys don't know, um, Jonas and I started a book club earlier this year and it's all online so you can join via the link in our bio later if you like and we're holding all the discussions on our blog and email newsletter but you can definitely we're gonna definitely have fun like this with special guests here and there and I'm so excited for you to meet our special guests today like I said we are gonna be talking about the secret garden and which we wrapped up recently but we got this amazing opportunity that we can't wait for you to uh, meet our special guest. So her name is Carrie, and she is the great-great-granddaughter of the author of The Secret Garden. We're gonna have her jump on in a few minutes and tell us all about Frances Hodgson Burnett. How amazing is that? And just so you know, we're gonna be holding all of the live questions until the end of, towards the end of the live stream. We're gonna be chatting for about an hour. And we also, if you missed it, we are doing a giveaway, which I already posted on my, on It's a Charming Life's feed today, but uh, we're gonna give a special peek at it towards the end of the live stream as well. So I'm very, very excited. So let me get Carrie here for you guys, and we're gonna chat. It's gonna be so much fun. Hello! Yay! Welcome! You're <laughs> welcome. Welcome. Thank you for inviting me. Are you kidding? Yes, thank you. Thank you so much for being our very special guest today for the Sleepy Hollow Book Club live chat. So can you please introduce yourself? Yes. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Carrie Wilt, and I am the great-great-granddaughter of Frances Hodgson Burnett. Um, just to kind of give you a little background, so Frances had two children. One was... Um, uh, my great-grandfather, Vivian, uh, who I'll tell you about in a second. The other one was Lionel. Lionel uh, passed away at almost 16 of mm. tuberculosis. Uh, and actually, one of my favorite things about Francis is that um, although he was sick for a very long time, and she took him all over this world trying to find a cure for him, um, mm. she never let him know that he was ill or dying. Um, so she uh, kept hope alive in him uh, by telling stories, um, but even up until his last, last breath, he didn't know uh, that he was dying. And I just I mm -hmm. think that that's like one of the best gifts a mom could give um, oh my gosh. at that age, that she just let him be a, a boy for as long as he possibly could. So my great-grandfather is Vivian, um, and this is him. And if you know much about Francis, Francis wrote... Um, a few other big books that you would know, um, Little Lord Fauntleroy, um, and you can see how uh, he inspired that. Um, <laughs> this is him as an, as an adult. Um, he loathed um, uh, being the inspiration behind <laughs> book. And he wasn't necessarily, he was the inspiration for the, um, uh, oh goodness, what are the people who make the, the illustrations. So oh, wow. an illustrator came to Francis's house and saw this photo of him and said, oh, this, this, is, this is our Cedric. Um, oh, wow. so, uh, but unfortunately, he got teased quite a bit. Um, matter of fact, actually, he died um, uh, uh, rescuing some people off of a, a boat in um, Long Island um, off, the, off the sound there. And uh, in the paper, it still said Little Lord Fauntleroy. Uh, mm -hmm. died at the age of whatever. Um, like he never really could live that down. Um, mm -hmm. And also there's the unfortunate Knickers incident um, where she basically inadvertently became a trendsetter for the time um, with these velvet velvet clothes and velvet, um, you know, knickers. Like, I mean, I, I call them golf pants, but you know what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, exactly, like below the knee. Yes. I, there were a lot of boys that loved to hate him because of that, because their mamas made him, them wear that. Um, and she even got um, she even got in trouble because the wool industry, um, similar to remember when Dr. Phil made a comment um, a while back about the, the beef industry. Um, <laughs> Oprah, it wasn't Dr. Phil, it was Oprah. Okay. Was a comment about the beef industry, and the beef industry like took her to court. A very okay. thing happened to Francis. 
where um, the wool industry was um, basically blamed her for the downfall of, of wool garments because of this new trend in velvet, um, which I don't know about y'all, but I feel like nobody wants to wear wool. Like it's itchy. It's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if yeah. you don't like choose to well wear something, I think that velvet is probably way better. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, but she got blamed for that. So anyway, so um, that's my great grandfather. My great, great, my great grandfather had two daughters, um, uh, Dorinda, who had no children, and then um, Verity, which was my grandmother. Okay. And then my grandmother had three children. Uh, one son had no children. Well, actually, he did have a child. We didn't find out about her until later, which is a whole other amazing oh, story. Oh, wow. Okay. So that here. <laughs> Anyway, so basically there are five of us in this generation and I'm, and I'm one of those. So, um, you know, mm -hmm. she, she had three kids, my mother and then me. So um, anyways, just, just to give you an idea of kind Thank of, you. all this isn't like a, I'm a, you know, long lost relative. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. the great, great granddaughter direct line. All the yeah, time. that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I lucked into this gig. Like, you know, <laughs> you just give your, and yes, um, but I'm having more fun. Um, doing my best and my part to carry on her legacy. Um, That's what I mean so much. Yeah. All the well tended life, which is basically all about the life lessons that are tucked inside the pages of the secret garden. Mm -hmm. um, it is, is very much inspired um, by all the themes that y'all just read about. Um, <laughs> so I'm excited to tell you all the stories. I feel like I've already like diverged. And That's great. Well, we are here for all of the stories. <laughs> I can talk all day long. So Oh, I love it. But um, so you are also a speaker, writer. I just want people to know a little bit more about what you do um, and your new podcast. Yes, just, just launched a podcast last week. Um, because okay. guess what? I'm a speaker, and guess who doesn't get to go speak in um in the crazy COVID <laughs> time that we're in this time, the season mm -hmm. of my adventure, I like to call it. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so it was like, okay, how can I still do this, um, but do it in a different way, and. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, new, new podcast and uh, yours yeah. will be on the podcast next week. So thank you. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited for everybody to hear that later. So yeah. yeah, thank you so much for having me on your podcast. It's such an honor. Oh, um, I, I love the, the blossoms and blooms that you share through everything that you do. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Francis was very, I, Francis was very much a kindred spirit in, in that um, for mm -hmm. sure. Uh, she was always trying to, uh, I believe you, you, you found the quote that she's always trying to write a little bit of happiness into this world. And uh, that's de very definitely what she thought her mission was. Um, and I'm so surprised I had never heard that quote before. You know, I was just blown away when I was doing my research about her before I even knew you and for the book club. And I was just like, this is such an amazing quote. And why aren't sharing this all the time I think a lot of times the, the quotes that get pulled are the secret garden right and so the other mm -hmm. ones are you, you can find them but they're typically found in um, uh, in her biographies so unless mm -hmm. you've read some of those you probably you probably wouldn't see them out there on an everyday basis yeah, that's so crazy. I've rounded up live questions or questions already from the book club for you to answer now and then in case anyone's just jumping on we're gonna have some time at the, towards the end of this live chat where you can send in your questions live for Carrie in case we didn't touch anything um, that you wanted to hear about. So yeah, um, let's jump in, shall we? <laughs> Do it, dig in, yeah. dig in. First question would be, can you tell us more about Frances's early life and how she started writing and perhaps how her family inspired her writing, which you kind of already touched on? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, Frances was born in Manchester, England, um, and she was born a storyteller. Uh, I think most people who, if you, if ever been a mama, you know, some, that your, your babies come out how they come out. And I think she, mm -hmm. she came out like telling stories from the get go. Um, uh, her very first book was given to her by her grandmother, um, at, at the age of three. And it was one of those, you know, hardback books. Uh, for young kids um, that was uh, called the Little Flower Book. And it was like, mm -hmm. a, you know, A is for apple blossom, C is for carnation. Um, <laughs> already see that there's the seed to the secret garden she would lay, you know, write later mm -hmm. on in her life. Um, mm -hmm. For sure, she started reading um, by kindergarten. 
Um, there were always books in her home. Um, and she told recess uh, stories at recess. So if you were a friend of Frances's, um, you would find her at recess and you would hear a story. But if you wanted to hear the next chapter, you had to find her back on the playground again um, uh, at the next, the next one. So, <laughs> um, and, um, but as far as how her family inspired her writing, um, several things um, definitely were big inspirations. Um, one, uh, the tragedy of the death of her father at three. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, this ends up bleeding into her writing in the fact that um, in almost all of her books, um, the main char character typically does not have a complete set of parents which I think is also a, a kind of a Disney thing as well. I'm just thinking that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, I mean, you write about what you know, um, and that mm -hmm. was a, a part of things. And then she was raised by a single mom. Mm. You know, she was one of five kids, and wow. the single mom took on her, uh, her husband's business, um, which was like um, – home goods manufacturing. Um, and it was right in the middle of the Civil War. And uh, all her clients were in the US and um, they weren't buying uh, beautiful chandeliers and things like that. So mm -hmm. she was, you know, watching her mom try to save their business and then finally ultimately moving her family to the US, um, to Nashville, mm -hmm. outside of Nashville, um, mm -hmm. right when she was about 16. Um, and they came at the promise of jobs for, um, for the boys and, uh, barely survived. And, um, you know, a lot of those hardships are, are, are kind of through, throughout our writing. Um, some other inspirations though, too, um, I think she was a born storyteller, which means that she told stories all the time, like mm -hmm. never stop ever, ever, ever. And her brothers, they were not such supporters or fans of it. I mean, imagine, you know, you're annoying little constantly. Yeah telling stories running around the house. And, um, but uh, her sisters were big supporters and big advocates. And, and they were actually the ones who um, basically um, uh, it conspired together with Frances to teach those boys a lesson. Uh, Frances uh, decided she wanted to get published and she, um, a story, and she and her sisters went out into fields and picked wild grapes. They, because they were poor as dirt, like poor, 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 to, pay, to put the, the story down on paper um, mm. to be able to send off. So first they had that money, so they picked wild grapes and they um, sold them in the farmer's market in Knoxville, wow. Tennessee. And then they bought the postage and everything they needed. She wrote the story, sent it in, and um, the first letter that came back, um, they basically said that they didn't believe that she wrote it, um, <laughs> that how could an English um, girl write this story? Um, and she, they said, if this is you, if you did write this story, write us another one um, and we'll reconsider. And uh, she, of course, she, she was redheaded. She was not gonna, she wasn't going down like that. She wrote the other story. They came back and said, yes, we want to buy that one and we want to buy the other one. We will buy any stories you send in to us. And from that point on, she was never refused by a publisher, not even once in her career, which is a crazy. Yes. For a woman but, too. Right? Yes. What it also did was it got her money and that money in turn shut those brothers up. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how the, so she could actually make a living with her gift of gab and storytelling. Um, uh, yeah. They definitely, uh, they definitely changed their two for sure. But that, those are one of the inspirations. And the next question was, if any of the family members of her have gone on to also be writers. My great grandfather um, was in the publishing business um, and um, he did write her biography. Um, but no one wrote like Francis wrote. Um, my grandmother actually wrote um, amazing uh, letters to my, like my mom and brothers, you know, her brother in college. Uh, and so, but um, my grandmother's generation and, and even uh, Vivian's, my great grandfather's generation, very much um, coveted their privacy. Um, what you have to understand is that Francis was like the Oprah of her time. Um, she mm -hmm. was uber famous. She was the highest paid author of her time. She was, she couldn't get out into, out into public without the press being there. And so, 
um, the family that was very close really did not step out into the limelight. Well, and then I mean, I, I'm writing, so I guess I yeah, that's why I was like that. I'm, I'm <laughs> You know, I don't consider, I mean, I do consider myself a writer. Uh, not to Francis' stature by any stretch of imagination, but I no. uh, love to write my whole life and um, have written a book. I'm working to get it published now. So uh, all good vibes out there for me, people anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so this is actually one of my questions because uh, she did move around quite a bit, as we talked mm -hmm. about. Yes. Um, and then I was surprised to find out that she wrote The Secret Garden not in England, but on Long Island in New York. <laughs> and yes. I just, you know, you always imagine her in in England writing The Secret Garden. But, um, and then I, when I got excited, oh, psh, the house is in New York. I wonder if I can visit there because we're here in Sleepy Hollow. And then I did a bunch of research and found out that the house had burned down. Um, and I didn't know if you knew more about that. Yeah. No, it is still there. Um, it oh, is really? the re residence, and I think on purpose they make it very, very difficult to find. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, it is still a private residence. There was a fire there, oh. actually in her library. Um, oh. So a lot of her books burned, um, oh, wow. but it, mm -hmm. it did not destroy the house. Um, matter of fact, I have okay. a. So this is the home, right? Oh my gosh. Um, and you can see, like, the, of course, amazing mm -hmm. rose garden. Um, oh, wow. this, is, this is on um, the front lawn. That's my grandfather with a bouquet oh. of roses. Oh, um, nice. And gorgeous. It um, overlooks Manhasset Bay. Um, so the whole back faces um, faces the bay, and it's it's absolutely beautiful. The other interesting thing about that house is um, not only did she write the secret garden in it, that entire house um, was built and furnished off of four months royalties off of her oh. at all. So if that oh. gives you any understanding of the kind of money she was bringing in, um, you know, four months royalties from one book, not even what we all consider to be the big three, which would be the secret garden, little Lord Fauntleroy mm -hmm. and a little princess. Um, mm -hmm. um, the secret garden was actually a commercial failure. That's another really interesting thing. I don't know if you knew that. No. <laughs> was, when she died, as far as she was concerned and, and the publishers were concerned, it was a commercial failure. Um, it did not do what the rest of her book had done. Um, and it really wasn't until the, um, uh, like the, the early 40s, um, when the classics, the research of the classics came, mm -hmm. um, that really librarians and teachers pulled that book forward and said, this is important. So um, mm -hmm. if you read the garden any time between now and then, you really have teachers and librarians to thank for that. Mm -hmm. um, but have gotten lost. Oh, wow. That's the, oh, can you imagine? <laughs> yeah. It's, um. it was. Crazy. And you talked a minute about how she traveled quite a bit um, mm -hmm. and give you some perspective. She actually crossed the Atlantic 33 times in her lifetime. Yes. A huge <laughs> deal by boat, right? Yes, by steamship. So you like oh think it was not like just a little two day journey. You know, it was it was a big it was a big deal. So speaking of the traveling and, you know, um, and the inspiration for her writings or her settings were often set in, in the UK and England, especially in Yorkshire. Um, but also she had India kind of, you know, in, in a couple of her books. And I didn't know if she had traveled there or spent time there. So I don't have, comp it's interesting. You're actually the second person to ask me this. And in, in the course of two weeks, uh, I was on a call. There's a, um, a, a, a couple ladies that are doing this amazing um, kind of like one act show about Francis right now. Um, and somebody mm -hmm. else asked a question about India. I looked in my, uh, what I call my Francis Bible, which is coffee. Oh. <laughs> I love I mean, it. it has like coffee stains. It's dark oh, here. And really? it actually has this awesome thing. It says dates and places. And it lists oh. all of the dates and places that um, she, she's been. And I can't find anything. Um, that says that, um, but she ran with a very cultured crowd, um, art, mm -hmm. art, who probably had also traveled. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I, I don't know where the India reference came from. Mm -hmm. 
And it also may have been in the news, you know, who knows? Mm -hmm. That's so interesting. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess we'll never know, like, her inspiration for yeah. writing about India. Hey, if you do want to read, there are several good biographies about Frances if you want to read more. Um, this is one, matter of fact, this one's being reprinted um, in conjunction with the Secret Garden movie coming out. Um, this one's by Anne. Um, but there are several, they're all good. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear the name of that one. Was that the one her son wrote about her? No, mm -mm. no, this okay. one's called With Party by Anne Thwaite. Okay. Um, is, uh, is really the most thorough, I believe. Mm. Cause, cause he was, he was just his, you know, this, he was writing about his mama. Uh, okay. he didn't really <laughs> with the eye of a biographer. I think, uh, you know, you tell the story as you remember it, maybe, and also yeah. <laughs> as you want to tell it uh, versus, <laughs> you know, not, not to say that there aren't, it's not factual. It's just, yeah. I think it's, they're two totally different lenses. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I love that he, his autobiography of her was called The Romantic Lady. And I just think yes. that's so endearing. <laughs> uh, so I don't know if you can yeah. shine some light on the name of, or about that, because um, I, read maybe you can tell me if this is true or not that yeah. she struggled with um depression and mental health and at the time you know people probably didn't really know what that was um but she was still known as you know her son would still fondly remember her as the romantic lady and that the fact that she could still write the way she wrote with all of that um depression is incredible yeah. so um i would tell you that um well first of all it's interesting uh, your your audience may not know also as well, although she's known as a children's author today, 95% um, of what she wrote were romance stories. Oh, wow. Well. Uh, yeah. So uh, really, if you if you went out and randomly picked up a book by Francis that weren't really those top three, your chances of hitting a romance novel is is pretty, pretty serious. Mm -hmm. um, and um, but I think. So yeah, she struggled big time. Um, part of that was um, because she, she was an, uh, a pen driven machine. She was a workaholic um, mm. big time. And um, you asked in, in one of the questions, you know, was there a certain time or a season that she writes? Yeah. And no, when it came, she mm. had to get it out in a mm. frantic way that um, left her um, completely spent, um, mm. exhausted, um, and then her nature was to be a, a workaholic as well. And so um, she would literally finish a book and then almost immediately check herself into a sanitarium to rest. Oh, yes. wow. And she didn't allow um, herself the rest when she was in the middle of writing a book. And so she would just, so she would often have these breakdowns and uh, she had health issues, she had uh, some heart issues. Um, mm -hmm. but she felt like these stories needed to be told. And so she <laughs> just, you know, just frantically wrote them all down. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah. But I also think too, that he refers to her as the romantic lady, because I don't know, there's something about the word romantic. I think it's more, it's like a notion, the mm. notion of being romantic, um, and believing in better things. Um, yeah course happy endings and so I think you know I think she kind of wrote a lot of times the stories that she wished she could have um mm -hmm. but was too busy being a workaholic um <laughs> with, you know what I think there's a lot of us I mean I know this girl right here has always struggled with that right mm -hmm. um too busy to really um uh, have maybe that that full life and I think we're all learning mm -hmm. a lot of that right now uh with mm -hmm. with the quarantines and things so well, that's what yeah. I love. That's very similar about the well-tended life and it's a charming life. It's about, you know, um, you know, finding the growth in your own life. And I love how you say, you know, to tend your own garden. And yeah. also, I love how you call yourself the not-so-secret gardener, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> that's my favorite. Girl. I have weeds in my garden. I have a broken <laughs> It is. Yeah, I don't, I don't need, I don't need that kind of comparison. <laughs> my garden is perfect and neither is my life. Um, which is <laughs> you know, why we're all on this journey, right? To figure it out and to grow while we're here. Did you start gardening yourself because of your inspiration from Francis or? No, actually not at all. Um, I started go a gardening um, because I got chickens and chickens are the gateway drug to gardening. Oh, um, okay. 
<laughs> sitting eating like an egg and you think, ah, oh, fresh tomato sure would be good with this. And then mm-hmm. it's like one thing leads to another. And then you think, well, I, of course, I, if, if I have chickens, I must, I must be a gardener. A question you know, right? you know, everybody wants to know okay. is Perfect. did Frances have her own secret garden? So Frances always, her whole life, mm-hmm. she was inspired by them, but she didn't actually, and she surrounded herself with gardens everywhere she went um but she didn't actually become a gardener until she was almost 50. she didn't actually work in the her own spade into the ground until that which is crazy but if you also heard what i just said she was locked in a room Mm -hmm. um and so uh she surrounded herself with roses specifically almost Mm -hmm. everywhere um and there were really three gardens that inspired her and inspired um, her grandmother had a fantastic garden. There was a garden down the street from her um, uh, gr- her, her mom growing up. Um, uh, and then there was one big garden uh, that inspired the secret garden. Um, probably the most, most of the, um, the, the Robin comes from there. The walled garden comes from there. Um, and, and that's in um, Matham Hall in Kent, England. Um, exactly. mm-hmm. Yeah, I have a picture of that. Actually, well, here's a picture of her, Frances. Actually, um, she. This is her looking up over the uh, ivy-covered wall, mm-hmm. and she's actually she's actually pointing to the robin, um, which was an actual friend of hers. She said it was the oh. best friend walking in the garden. She said it's the oh. best friend she ever had. Because oh, that's so sweet. Oh, my gosh. You're always so happy. Um, but I wanted to show you. So this um, so this was the house that she rented for nine seasons. Um, this is actually, it, it did burn. This is what it looks like today. Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, and it was crazy. It actually had... Um, let me read. It's a, so this is, she's describing it to her son in a letter. And she says, uh-huh. it's a, a charming place with nicely timbered park, a beautiful old walled kitchen garden. The house is excellent with paneled square hall, a library, a billiard room, a morning room, a smoking room, a drawing room, a dining room, 17 or 18 bedrooms. It has two stables, uh, two lodges with a porch and a square tower from which you can see the English Channel. Oh. Crazy. <laughs> yes. Well, and so she spent a whole lot of time in this garden. Um, it was actually mm-hmm. abandoned when she first rented it. She rented it for nine seasons. So the garden itself was in disp- disrepair. And over the nine seasons, she brought it back to life. Do we see the theme? Right. <laughs> There's the one big thing that I love um, that you can just see Francis strolling through and looking at this wall and thinking to themselves, why would someone lock up a garden? Oh my gosh, you just gave me chills. <laughs> That's see, amazing. See from this picture. Can oh you my see? Goodness. Do you see it all? Okay, so and then here it is. Um, oh my gosh, that, the ivy. Right? That's incredible. And, yeah, you can see that little nugget got lodged. Oh, absolutely. One. Why would someone do that? Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, so I don't know. I feel like maybe I got off off uh, there, but so, but basically, this garden was where she learned to garden. Um, okay. She was out there. She was out there with the gardener every single day. Uh, she and she loved it, and she gardened basically from then forward, where, where and whatever she could. Okay, and you said where was that place? Uh, this one is in Kent, England. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And um, okay, so that's not in Yorkshire, but that's where she's from, and that's probably why she wrote the accent into the Secret Garden and some of the characters that I love so much. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, for sure. And, and actually, it's interesting because the, the Secret Gardens, the books that we actually know the least about, as far as mm-hmm. what 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 was going on in her life at the time, what she was thinking, what she was writing about, because because she wrote it at home. And when you're at home, write letters the way that you do when you're traveling. We really don't have a whole lot of information mm-hmm. um, about her life. And um, you can see, like, there's some letters that she wrote. Mm-hmm. Um, she was, thank goodness, 
a, a letter writer um, because that is where that's where all these biographers you know know all this information about her. So my personal question is about I love the theme in the Secret Garden about the magic. I think it's just the most charming thing, and uh, it it really helped me that chapter during a difficult time in my life to believe again in the beauty of the world and and magic and good things. So I'm um, not going to cry, <laughs> um, but I would love to hear if you know where she got the inspiration from about the magic, um, because, you know, in the final chapter of the book, too, she just kind of really, like goes home with that theme. And yes. just wanted to know if you know what inspired her to write about the magic. So I think magic means a lot of things. Uh, to Francis, um, in, in, even within the secret garden, you can see it takes on um, uh, a, a lot of different things and um, definitely um, uh, comes from her spiritual beliefs, for sure. Um, mm. She definitely in a high air power. Um, she actually wrote in one of her other small kids' books, um, it was uh, The Troubles of Queen Silverbell, she writes in the beginning, um, a little letter to the children and it says, and it's from Francis, dear children, this letter is to ask you to not make the mistake of thinking I wrote these stories. <laughs> I am an honest, hardworking person, and I only do the spelling. If you thought I invented the stories, Queen Hatch would be very angry, and I might lose my place. Your humble servant, Francis Burnett. She knew her stories came from another source. Um, I think anybody written um, a story, um, you know that you're 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 inspired by something, um, Hillian. Uh, you can see that um, uh, in the fact that she talks about um, she believed that her um, her son was headed towards the streets of gold. Um, her faith was definitely shown in the Secret Garden when they sing the doxology. Um, you know the song, you know, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Oh, um, yeah. You can see it there. Um, favorite things in the secret garden that um, um, uh, the gardener says is, is um, you know, don't stop believing in the big good thing by name you call it um, because it doesn't stop to worry itself about that. You can also see that she was also tolerant of, mm. you know, whatever but he wanted to call it. Um, you want to call it magic. You want to call it God. Um, whatever for you, you know, doesn't care or, or <laughs> it doesn't care to say it. Um, but also, you can also see how, how her um, books, and specifically The Secret Garden, was also influenced by the New Thought Movement, which was very blunt at the time, which is the power of, of positive thinking. Um, mm -hmm. In The Secret Garden, it says thought or thought um, were as powerful as electric batteries, as good as one for mm -hmm. sunlight is, and, and as one is po for poison. Um, and so she definitely believed um, you know, what, what you put in uh, to your mind was important. Um, and uh, in my fact, there's another fairy tale that she wrote called The Land of the Blue Flower. Um, which she said, fill your mind with a beautiful thought. There'll be no room in it for an other. Um, so she definitely believed in, in that as well. Um, mm -hmm. But I think the word magic her, um, you know, took many forms. It, it, it meant nature. Um, mm -hmm. She believed power of being outside and digging in the dirt and mm -hmm. running and playing especially for kids. And you, you have to remember, too, at that time, you know, kids were meant to see, seen, but not heard. Um, you know, mm -hmm. you know, or, or maybe it's also, right? Seen, but <laughs> not heard, right? You weren't, yeah. you weren't supposed to mess up your dress. You weren't out, and she was a very big proponent for that. Um, you know, uh, Colin says, the magic in the garden is made me and I know I'm going to live to be a man. Mm -hmm. You know, there's something powerful when you hurt and you, you feel nature around yeah. you, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but then, then there's also, she talks about in The Secret Garden, it says the magic works best when you self, which mm -hmm. is basically our part of faith, right? You know, mm -hmm. faith without work, you know, is meaningless. And so, you know, we've got we've to do our part um, to go and do those things that we were, we were made to do and grow, um, um, for sure. And then uh, at the end of the day, though, the magic is, is in us. Um, and Colin said it best. I mean, he said the magic is in, and, um, you know, we all, every one of us, yeah, um, to, to, to do what it 
Yeah, every, every single one of us. Yeah, it doesn't matter. So um, I don't know if that, I hope that question. Yes, I love your perspective. Did I miss any? No, that's wonderful. Um, so fun. I just, it's my, it was my favorite discussion question um, when we were reading it because I think it's just very open to like your personal interpretation and like, connection if you, you know, with nature and everything. So it's really beautiful. And the way that she wrote it is just, yeah, my favorite. Thank you so much for hanging in there, even though we've had technical difficulties. Um, so every, if, and if Carrie hasn't answered anything that maybe you wanted to have covered, then please start entering them in right now and then she can answer them live. And in the meantime, I was hoping Carrie that you could share maybe a little something about the new Secret Garden movie that's supposed to be coming. Yeah. I'm so excited about the movie coming direct to video, which my heart is a little sad about that. I also know that there's a silver line in all of this, which also means that millions of people mm -hmm. across the country, uh, you have to pay for your, you know, a movie ticket. Um, you can get your whole family together in one room and, and buy it on, you know, buy it um, on demand. Mm -hmm. um, so super excited about that. Um, if you don't know, it's starring Colin Firth. And um, Julie Walters are the two big main names that you would know, but who did um, Paddington oh. and um, and Harry Potter. Oh, wow. So if, um, when I was speaking with Rosie Allison, um, one of the main producers, which by the way, it's an all female producer, um, produce movie, um, which Frances would love that. Oh, okay. And, um, okay. But speaking with her, she just felt like, she said, I wouldn't redo this movie because it's so precious. She said, I don't think that the other versions have captured the magic of the um, so yeah. You've seen the previews. You can go to um, all my social media. It's magic with 12 exclamation points. Gives you goosebumps from head to toe. Yeah. Give you some insight. Um, not exactly to the letter of the book. And I know that there are some out there and hiss and feel like you have to somehow Francis made it in the beginning tell you I need you to let it go um, <laughs> art is meant and it's meant to grow and bloom yeah. and now with all the special effects nowadays can really embrace the magical side of the garden Francis knew what it was like to convert a book and turn it into a play which is the same thing that they're doing. Um, so with a, a Little Princess, she actually wrote A Little Princess three different times. So she wrote it once, it was mm -hmm. um, called What Happened at Miss Mentions. She turned it, she converted it into a play, and when she converted it into a play, new characters came up. Oh, mm -hmm. So wrote them in, and new, new parts, um, and then the play was so successful that the publishers came back and said, will you please rewrite it with the new characters in it? Oh, um, more characters, came up and more <laughs> scenes that imagine wouldn't have been in the in the beginning but they weren't um because it's art art is always changing and Frances used to talk about how she would um no sooner take the manuscript and put it in the mailbox you know we used to have mailboxes <laughs> right <laughs> yeah. she would it off and she said no sooner would i close the door would a new character would pop up oh. and start talking to me and she said i used to argue with them and go, you're too late. Like, if you wanted to be in this book, you had to come earlier. Oh. Um, and so I guess my, my point is, is that Francis know that art is always changing. Mm -hmm. And you hold too tight to what it was, you're not going to get to see the beauty and what it's become. Mm -hmm. You're going to don't want you to miss it. It's the same thing with the Secret Garden musical. Um, mm -hmm. there, there are things in that that weren't in the original, but one of the most beautiful songs that I cry every single time is called Lily's Eyes. And it's, it's not true of the Secret Garden, but it is perfection and it's exactly where um, it's supposed to be. But if you're holding so tight, mm -hmm. I always call them the book ladies. <laughs> you know, if you're holding so tight to to that you you don't see the evolution and it's it's just like holding too tight to a caterpillar mm. and not allowing it to be a butterfly mm -hmm. um it's the same thing. so i hope you embrace the movie i um you know we don't make a dime off of this um you know the the copyright laws and also mm. i'm not like pitching the movie because i want <laughs> you to go see it. i want you to go see it and i want you to share it with the kids below you and and your grandmother and your mom i want you to take everybody take the boys too y'all mm. the secret garden is a 
tree that should be planted in the hearts of, of every person because everybody needs a secret garden. Okay. Everybody needs that place to go, um, you know, to feel safe and to um, be themselves. Mm -hmm. um, um, so I, I, I encourage you, take them, read, see if you can, if you can re read the book with them before you mm -hmm. go, because that's always, but yeah. Um, yeah. Um, Who knows? So beautiful to hear your thoughts. Absolutely. It's just a, you know, a timeless classic story that has just stood, stood the test of time. And it's just wonderful that, you know, there's going to be a, this new movie coming out and hopefully the story will just never, ever get lost in time. I did see one or two questions come in for you. There was a question about what's your personal favorite book written by Francis? So I will tell you, you know, the, um, I guess the political answer should be the secret garden. That's not the truth. Okay. Um, is, um, it's a little princess. Oh. I love Sarah. Um, mm. And I love funny disposition and her generosity and her imagination and her always seeing the bright side mm -hmm. of things. Um, you know, you fall in love with Sarah from the beginning. And I think that's probably, I have a hard time with Mary. She's, <laughs> She's a little, she's a little sour in the beginning. And so I'm a, I, yeah, so I'm a fan of her in the end, but, um, but yeah, the, but, I, and I think I fell in love with, with a, a little princess before I did as well, um, the secret garden, but they're, I mean, they're all good. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, uh, they're, yeah. I mean, go out, read them. <laughs> exactly. you know, um, enjoy them for yourself in your own way. Yes. Um, well, that was one question I think we didn't cover too that I was curious about is if you know who, because we know that um, Colin was inspired by her son that passed away and yes. um, Mary, do you know who she was inspired by? I, I don't know the answer to that. Um, Frances always said that she took a slice off of um, someone every day <laughs> uh, and she, she even giggled and said it's quite ghoulish actually um to think about that but um i think if if you're a, a writer specifically a fiction writer you're always um you're seeing characteristics in this person of that and the the accent of this person over here and um and back and forth so uh i i don't know her as a specific person okay. um uh, but also because letters the letters were not um written a lot at during that time we don't mm -hmm. have a lot of on that and because it wasn't a, su a su success mm. a lot written about it afterwards as well oh interesting uh, okay yeah so another question we won't <laughs> get enough a real answer for but that's it's fun that it's mysterious just yeah. like the secret garden is <laughs> um yeah so yeah. i see some they you know they read the book as an adult mm -hmm. um and they're rereading it now i'm always interested um to see how this how people uh, view it differently. I have a I have a girlfriend who, um, as a matter of fact, Catherine Center. She's actually um, uh, an amazing like New York Times bestseller mm -hmm. um, uh, writer. But she read it as a as a, a teenager, like a, a like probably twelve. Um, you know, where boy crushes were a big deal at that time, and mm -hmm. so she her garden and was convinced that there was a love story in there, <laughs> which there's really not at all. No. And she said. She, it as an adult and she was like wait wait a minute wait you know because we all have different lenses when when we're reading something we read into it what which that's the beauty of it right you you put your own self in there your your you develop your characters in your mind mm -hmm. um and so I'm always interested to see how people you know if they, if they find things like that that they didn't yeah. see before or um so or if it's or if it's their adult lens as it as it was as a kid mm. that's yeah that's that's really that must be fun for you to hear all the stories everyone's secret garden stories and i know you have your own too actually which i don't know if you shared um uh, i i didn't so <laughs> uh, those of you who just read the secret garden for the first time and didn't read it as a kid uh you're not in um you're not you're you're in good company uh, that, <laughs> Uh, I grew up in the TV, you know, the movie generation, right? So we had the movies were already out, mm -hmm. and um, uh, I, I don't know, you know, I don't, I don't think I ever told anybody I 
I did, but I certainly never told anybody I did. I hadn't read it, um, and I had seen my mother had given all these speeches about Francis, and so I thought I just thought I already knew the story, yeah. and so until I was almost forty, that I finally was like, okay, I got to get this. Like, I don't know this. It was like a deep, dirty secret. <laughs> yeah, I got to read this. And, but I also was, I was worried because like you said, people do come up to us often and talk about this book, this book. I mean, usually mm -hmm. it is like, let me, I mean, let me tell you about how it changed my life. And I had this fear, like, what if it's not that book for me? Oh, wow. Yeah. I could just totally but see why that would be intimidating. So, you know, so I like, I think I just put it off as long as, um, I could mm -hmm. and, um, I, you know, I believe in perfect timing and it was, it was actually, it was total perfect timing for me because, um, I read the book when I was, um, buried in the weeds of my own busyness. Mm -hmm. um, I had locked away dreams of being a writer. Um, I, I had, um, I, 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 I was basically the secret garden, um, who had, um, you know, stopped watering. I quit watering myself. I had quit watering my dreams. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, I had shoved probably too many plants in my garden mm -hmm. where they were each other out. Yeah. Um, and um, I, I just, I saw myself reflected in that garden. And at, at night I was reading the secret garden and in the morning um, I do a daily journal practice oh. um, and I sit and I do devotionals. And um, uh, at night I would read the secret garden in the morning. It would be almost the exact same theme. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes even very similar words. And um, I just kept getting drawn back together with her in this way um, that I could explain. I finally went, okay, I think I'm supposed to do something with this. And mm -hmm. uh, it was when I realized that the secret garden, um, you know, could teach us all a lot about life, um, and mm -hmm. uh, which is really where well tended life came from. It was, you know, you know it all do exactly what Mary did, you know, gathered her friends you know, opened the door, pulled all the weeds, dug mm -hmm. deeper, oh. you know, let the sunshine face, you know, and, um, you know, and went to work every day, rain or shine mm -hmm. on this. He wanted to grow, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it, you even, it doesn't matter what your, your life garden looks right now. Like that's the power and the hope that's in the secret garden mm -hmm. is that, you know, anybody can, can 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 grow and bloom again with with help of just a little magic and that magic is exactly that that's the work it's the yeah. it's the work that you have to do on yourself and and on the things that you want to grow so that was so beautiful i love your secret garden story and thank you so much for being here and talking with me today we have like just two minutes left before instagram's gonna cut it off so well, we need to talk about the giveaway yeah oh, exactly so really quick everyone in case you didn't see my post today. Um, we were doing giveaway together and all the details are on the post on It's a Charming Life. And Carrie so graciously um, contributing this beautiful book to the giveaway and it's yeah. um, going to be signed by yourself and your mother, right? And your daughter. My daughter. And, uh, yep. So three generations of Francis's relatives. You'll, you'll have them hand signed. If you don't know about this birth, Version. It's called, um, I always say it wrong, so I'm going to, Minalima, M-I-N-A-L-I-M-A, and it elements in it. Mm, so so cool. I, it has a whole diagram of, uh, of, of the, the house. That's so cool. The property. I'm afraid that Instagram's going to cut us off any second, but I really <laughs> love it. <laughs> it just doesn't give much warning. But thank you so much for contributing that book to the giveaway and for being here. And also, yeah, there's going to be a bookmark um, that Jonas painted. So there's our contribution. And so thank you so, so much, Carrie. And I'm going to, you know, put all the links for where everyone can find you. And thanks again for being a part of the Sleep Yellow Book Club. <laughs> no problem. Okay, thank you. Bye for now. Bye. Well